It is Trinity Sunday, and I could attempt to explain the Trinity to you. Uh, that first reading, too, is terrific, that story of Moses on the mountain. And the last read, the gospel reading, that's John 3.16, a, probably the most known verse in the Bible for, for most people, I guess. But I, I'd rather take a look at um, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the end of his second letter to them. Because there's a sentence in there that basically, I think, gives us a prescription for how to deal with people who disagree with us, which is a, a topic I think that might be especially helpful now. So just to remind you, Paul writes, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. Rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. It's the third phrase, of course, that might catch your eye or your catch your ear. Agree with one another. How do you agree with someone with whom you disagree? But the reason I know that Paul intended this, this sentence to apply to disagreements is the whole letter of 2 Corinthians, in many ways, is Paul trying to help the Corinthian church who are very much divided in all sorts of different ways. And this is how he ends it. But if you go with, through it with me, I think you'll see that Paul's got some great wisdom here. He starts out with rejoice. That's an odd thing to start with. Why, why would you rejoice over the fact that I have to struggle every time I go to Thanksgiving dinner because, you know, uncle so-and-so is going to be there and he's going to get into a big disagreement with the rest of us. But it goes back to the, the homily from last week, I think. Diversity. I think you should rejoice. I think we should all rejoice in the diversity that is around us. Because you only have, if you're honest, you only have to think for just a moment, what would the world be like if, they, if the whole world was like you? I mean, really, you would enjoy this world? I would not. I do not think it would be the best thing for the world or the country or even this town or this parish if everybody was like me. You know, I mean, trust me, that will be a mistake. Um, we are so much better because there's so, so many differences amongst us. But then he, the next thing he says is mend your ways. Mend your ways. He doesn't say, oh, rejoice because you're right. Now mend their ways. Correct them. They're wrong. That's not what he says at all. He's like, mend your ways. Do you remember Jesus at the end of the Sermon on the Mount? He, he tell, or near the end, he tells this great story, uh, makes this great point. He says, hey, why, uh, why is it that when you've got this big log of a thing in your eye that you're interested in taking the speck out of your brother's eye? In other words, Jesus is saying, you know, you've got faults. Why are you so first concerned about the, the small faults in your brother? He says, you're a, you're a hypocrite. What you need to do before you correct your brother. Why don't, you, why don't you correct yourself? Why don't you mend your ways? And once you do that, as Jesus says, once you take the log out of your eye, then you can, you're, you'd be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So we need to rejoice in what the gifts that God has given us and others, and we need to for look first to mend our ways. And then the next to encourage one another and agree with one another. Which both seem hard, like how do you encourage someone who doesn't agree with you? Um, I suppose you could do it this way. This is from a sketch I saw oh, ages and ages ago. It, the, the, the scene, if you can picture this, is a group of people sitting around doing group prayer, praying together for each other and for the needs that they know of. And the one guy prays like this, Lord, I just pray here for my friend Harold, that you would give him the wisdom and discernment concerning our disagreement to know that I'm really sorry that he's wrong. <laughs> you could encourage people that way. I don't think that's quite what Paul had in mind, but... Do you remember the phrase, 
agree to disagree? I think that is actually the key to this. Because if you're willing at the beginning to start and realize I'm not perfect, I'm not right. I may be right about this particular issue that we're disagreeing with. That's entirely possible. Maybe, maybe you would do indeed in this regard have truth on your side. But you don't, you're not always right. And I think that's the key to it. Because you realize that, okay, I am a flawed human being. You know, we live in a fallen world. And, and, and so in some matters, I'm going to have the correct viewpoint. My, my, my friend is, is in that same position. They're going to have, in some areas, the, the correct viewpoint, the correct answer. And in other areas, we're going to be wrong. And so I just wonder if the trick to this is to encourage each other towards the truth. I'm going to encourage the other person to head to, towards the truth that, that I, I, the places where I'm right. And I'm going to, you know, do what I can to, to nudge them towards the truth. But I also need, and I think this is critical, I need to be open to the fact that that same person in some other topic can do the same thing for me. I will encourage them, they will encourage me, and we will both move on. We'll both get better. You appreciate that only works if you're willing to admit that you aren't always right. Because, of course, if you think you're always right, he cannot, your, your opponent, if you will, cannot encourage you at all. You know, you just, you, like, uh, I'm right. You're, you're wrong. And you, it, the... The, issue, the, the image is not of you, the two of you walking together towards truth. The issue is one of you, like, let me drag you to the truth. And, of course, if, even if you are not aware of it, your, your friend knows that you're not perfect. And then the last thing, live in peace. I don't know this for a fact, but it seems to me that it would be very difficult to fire up your computer, pull out your phone, you know, sort of get the kinks out and go looking in social media for someone to correct and then be at peace about that. Because as you read things, I don't know, I, like I said, I could be wrong, but I just picture people's blood pressures going up, you know, as they like, oh, that's, that's wrong, okay, let me correct them. I mean, I just feel this anxiety. I don't see any peace in it. Maybe there is, but I, I don't see it. So you rejoice with the diversity. You mend your ways first. Admit that you're not right all the time. You encourage another. You, uh, you help them see the truth. You agree that you're both these fallen people. And as you move along, it's all peaceful. I don't know how that strikes you. You may think, well, that, that sounds very good in theory. It never works. I would disagree. I told you about Brian, my climbing partner friend from seminary. Brian and I did this. You, someday I would hope that you'll get a chance to meet this guy. Um, but when you do, you may be struck just even by looks at how different we are. We came out of two entirely different backgrounds. He grew up much different than I did. He grew up rather financially well secured. I, I grew up in, in pretty poor conditions. You know, I had this more normal sort of trajectory, you know, high school, college, uh, you know, got a job, just moved up that way. That was just kind of what I did. Brian was all over the place. He spent four years in the Marines as an infantry guy. And experienced things that I never, I never knew anything about. I never would have experienced it. And so when we would go climbing, those were long days, 16, 18 hour days, till we drove to the mountains, did, did the, whatever we were gonna do and come back. And you can't be with somebody 16, 18 hours a day without talking a lot, and we learned a lot about each other. And we were politically, as a good example, rather far apart. And so at some point, of course, politics came up. But neither of us jumped. Neither of us 
you know, looked at the other and was like, well, clearly, you're, you're just wrong. And we talked, and we told stories. And there was certainly lots of areas at which I think I was helpful to Brian. I knew some academic things that he did not know. He told me stories often that just completely changed my viewpoint of things. Because he had lived in slums, if you will, in his life. And so he knew something about what it was like to live in slums. He was on the, some of you are old enough to remember uh, Somalia, the peacekeeping force in Somalia. He was, he was part of that. He told me one story from his deployment there, which changed my whole idea, my whole understanding of the idea of peacekeepers and the use of military in, situ in certain situations. And I would think I could honestly describe those two years that we did this, that we very much moved each other along. I think in summary, if you just want a, a visual of it, if we started here this far apart in, in the world of politics and policies and things like that, I think we ended up here. Brian had moved me off of some, I guess, I hope not extremes, but he had moved me to see the other side of some issues. I had done the same for him. We had done this. We rejoiced in the fact that we were different. We were willing to admit that, okay, I thought I knew some of this stuff, but maybe I don't know as much. We certainly encouraged each other, not only on the mountains, but in this sort of way. And we were perfectly willing at the end of one day, you know, when, you know, I mean, we never often agreed, if you will, in the sense that we got to the same opinion about something. But we were perfectly willing to say, okay, that's where we got today. That's, that's fine. We'll agree that that's where we are. And maybe a next two, three hikes later, we moved on a little bit farther. And we were always at peace. Never, never a harsh word between us. It was terrific. And I miss it. I miss that sense of being, you know, journeying with somebody in that way. I just wish we could all do that in some way in our own situations. And that's what I leave for you. It's just the question of how can you do this in your life, in your situation? I don't know what that would look like. You know, maybe, maybe you just got to look around for the right person. Maybe you have to be much more careful about how you type or use your thumbs in social media. Maybe you have to turn off the commentator that you like so well that is actually pulling you away from other people. I don't know what that is for you, but I do hope you would give it some thought. I like that last line, live in peace. Don't we all want that?